Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Hey there folks, welcome you all to yet another Friday vlog of mine. Another Friday has caught up with us people. They happen quick and fast these days. It's been such a manic week at work, yet again, as it was last week, that I thoroughly deserve this flagon of ale, people. I'm telling you, it's like, and I'm the one in charge, so I'm allowed to say that I'm allowed this. I deserve this ale. Um, truth be told, I'm going to be really honest with you now, this is my second ale of the evening. <laughs> I get it's absolutely I don't know what it's like in the rest of the UK at the minute but at the moment and and all day pretty much and and when I came home it was the sun has been splitting the trees absolutely gorgeous day so it was the usual get back home get the grass cut have a shower get downstairs and well <laughs> I was going to do this uh, straight away but it was so bloody nice I took my first beer into the garden sat on the little, the, I've got, well, I've shown you already, but I've got the deck in that goes down a little set of steps out of the grass. So I was sitting on where the steps are with my beer, just texting my son about the news that we're about to talk about, or part of it. And yeah, so that's been my, my Friday evening. So it's nice. So like I've got, it's, it's been another one of those weeks at work that's been nonstop, like in, in positive and good ways, because, you know, it's all to do with new product launching, supporting it along with all the other normal things that happen within an academic year when you start a brand new one. So it's just been really, really busy and we've been quite short staffed just due to a number of a number of reasons that couldn't be helped. And so, you know, we've just been sort of two of us rattling into all these jobs that have been coming in, trying to sort out the new product that in a way that people want it and all that. So it's just been go, 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 go. And then I get to the end of the week and it's just this sort of <laughs> It's like a glaze because <laughs> I go for my weekly head shave. Yes, I get my head shaved weekly because I can't be bothered doing it myself. <laughs> I used to, but no, I don't do now. And so I, I went for my weekly head shave and the minute I sat down, it was the same last week. The minute I sat down, I usually, like, I'm usually quite free flowing with my chit chat with the girl that does my hair or both the girls that do my hair and um, not at the same time. <laughs> Only one of them does it at a time, but I jump between the two depending on who's free. And, uh, I just glaze over like at that point when I part when I get in there I glaze over and then I drive from there home <laughs> do what I need to do glaze over it's hard work people I tell you I tell you so nice though being able to just no but it's when the weather's like this it's just so nice to know that you can come back and you can enjoy that little bit of sunshine i know i had to cut the grass first but you know it only takes me what 15 minutes to sort all that out 15 20 minutes maybe get showered come down pour the pint the first pint and just you know relax <laughs> but it's just it's doubly nice when you can go out into the garden and do it isn't it like it's all very nice having a glass of wine or a beer or a flagon of ale of any kind but when you can do it in the sun it's just that little bit sweeter so you know Lovely people, lovely. Shall we get on with some gaming talk? I think we should. Flagons up to you all. You know I'd buy you one. You know I would. Each and every one of you know how kind I am and how, how I would buy you a drink. Later. Awesome people. Let's crack on. So, the big news is today that The Last of Us Part 2 looks like it's coming, people. It's coming. So, I'm going to put my glasses on now and look about 105 years old. If you say it's 106, you're fired. <laughs> Woo! I've got so used to wearing my glasses now. And I only, I only need them for reading. So, like, everything else, like when I look at if writing was on the wall just there or what, perfectly clear. The minute I look at smaller text on the phone or... I mean, part of the reason I went for a, an iPhone 7, other than the camera, was because the iPhone 5S I had at the time, was this, it was getting ridiculous with the text size. So anyway, the more I wear them, the more I think my eyesight's getting worse, because whenever I take them off and try and do anything, I feel like, since I've started wearing them, I feel like my eyesight's got twice as bad as it was, as it was before I started wearing them, but... Never ye mind, we are what we are, people. It could be that, or it could just be that I am 105 years old. 
let's move on, shall we? So thank you to IGN and their little, uh, their, their little, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Post on their stream. Article. That's the word I'm looking for. There was, apparently. I'm going to read it out to you, all right? I'm going to read it out to you and then we're going to talk about it. Developer Naughty Dog tweeted a short video clip that simply shows a switchblade knife and a dust particles drifting by. The accompanying text reads the date and time of state of play, September 24th, 2019 at 1pm PT. Pacific time, I think that means. If history serves me correctly. Uh, state of play, for those of you who don't know what state of play is, it's their version of Nintendo Direct. And that is basically a live stream of them showing you new stuff or stuff that's coming or stuff they want you to know about and they've been doing it i think monthly or every other month something like that so they've started doing these things rather than waiting for the big events to happen where they'll tell you stuff so on the 24th of september 2019 at 1 p.m pacific time is that a sunday I'll tell you what date is it it is the 20th no it's uh one two two three it's tuesday yeah, it's Tuesday. So go and figure that out. Google P the Google one PM Pacific time in GMT or wherever you might be in America and you'll figure out what the time is for your area. And they will be live streaming some new well, they're gonna be showing off new The Last of Us Part Two footage. So let's move on with what they were saying. I just explaining what state of play was really there. Should we move on? We've been waiting a long time for more information. The last time we properly saw the game was E3 2018. That is correct. So, you know, I mean, they didn't even turn up at E3 this year. So, in the midst of all of this, I'll have been showing that footage behind me because it's the only footage that we have. I think it's, it's good. I've shown it in, in vlogs before, but I think it's good to just refresh the mind as to what we were seeing because, you know, you, you see it a year ago and it's like, oh, I remember bits of it, you know. So, I'll, I'll put it up behind me. Um, 2018 with Sony's gameplay demo. Hopefully this week's state of play will reveal more and possibly even a release date. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Uh, the above tweet, which is uh, basically a picture of a tweet. Uh, it's the, the tweet in itself is a uh, naughty dog tweeting. I'm going to find and gonna, I'm going to kill every last one of them, which is something that Ellie says in the video, in the footage. And... It's got a, a tiny little video underneath it, which just has this dagger with the particles floating by. And then has the date and time of state of play. So we know that there's something's going to happen. Uh, so the above tweet from the official PlayStation account reveals that September 24th will be the date. The next state of play stream, which, much like Nintendo Direct, offers the upcoming PlayStation games. Uh, the last state of play showed blah, blah, blah. And then it gives the date again, and that's pretty much it. So... I think my personal opinion is this. We, I, 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 the more time goes on, I believe that that game is going to launch in the springtime or just before. And my gut is telling me it's going to be February. A few people have said it's going to be February. I said way back that it might be February or it, that it would be a crossover between PS4, PS5. The reason I don't like the crossover idea is because there will be... There's bound to be, I'm going to take these glasses off for a little bit while we talk, but there's bound to be uh, a, a proper PS5 title that's been built to launch with the PS5, because I think they know Halo 6 is launching with the Xbox, so they, they I for me, PlayStation needs to have a launch title, an exclusive launch title, and I think that that I, that, well, my mind is telling me Horizon Zero Dawn 2 there's a little bit of my mind that's saying that it could be Bloodborne 2. Uh, it's been a long time since Bloodborne, so I think, and we've had a Dark Souls 3 since then. I don't think Bloodborne will, is done by any means because it was such a fantastic game. I think we'll see two or three of those. I think it would be particularly harsh on those PS5 games that are specific to the PS5 to have The Last of Us dropped where it plays on PS5 and PS4 because it will just overshadow all of it. So the, the more I think about it, the more I think they would just would not do that. The Last of Us 5 will absolutely... Uh, the Last of Us 2 will absolutely play on the PS5, but there's no way they're going to launch it at the same time at launch I, for me because it will just overshadow everything else. So the more I think about it, the more I think it's going to be February slash spring. 
so and I've February is such a great month because I don't think there's a I, I don't think there's anything happening in that month. And it's a quiet time of year. We've had, you know, we're just over a month from Christmas and, and all that hype. So for me, I think it's a great, great time. There's a, I'm trying to remember when the first one dropped. Could have been similar time. Can't remember. But um, for me, I think that's the perfect drop time. The only oil in, the only sort of fly in the ointment, if you will, is the Ghost of Tsushima still has sort of vanished into the background somewhat, and we don't know where that's going to land. But after, I was chit-chatting with my son on the text, as I explained earlier, sitting on the stairs outside enjoying my beer before recording this. Uh, I was texting away to him, and we were talking about this, and we bo- we're both in the frame of mind that Ghost of Tsushima, if, if The Last of Us Part 2 is going to be a February thing, Ghost of Tsushima has to land somewhere early summer, and then that gives everything breathing room. And then you've got that to finish off the PS4. And then you've got uh, the PS5 launching in the autumn time, which we know is going to happen. Both consoles are going to launch at the same, around the same time, much like they did last time. So for me, I think that's the perfect layout. The only swap to that I would do is the Tsushima comes first and... The Last of Us is the last thing to hit the PS4 in the summer. But I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't fancy it that way around as much because we're not hearing about Ghost of Tsushima. We're hearing about The Last of Us Part 2. And I think I think once The Last of Us Part 2 is hit in February and everyone gets the tea stuck into it and excited about it months and months and months and months and months, Ghost of Tsushima, nothing happens on the PS4 exclusive-wise until the summer. You've then got a little bit of, you know, they've got a bit of freedom to go, woo! is a is a samurai game and you know i think that'd be the right way to do it i don't know if go to tsushima is anywhere near ready i mean it could be they've converted that game into a ps5 i've got no idea a game i've no idea it'll play on ps5 but they could make it an exclusive you know you're not talking about they designed it for ps3 and then they're like, no, make it a PS4 game. And I'm like, well, we can't do that because that's completely different hardware. <laughs> because we know going forward that, that both Xbox and PlayStation are basically turning these consoles into PCs as much as they can so that they can drag everything from behind us forward. Um, and absolutely, without any shadow of a doubt, and you can quote me on it, people, both those consoles that are coming out, PS5, Xbox 2, or whatever they're going to call it, will be backward compliant to ps4 and xbox one xbox one will have the xbox 360 compatible on it i'm sure of it i we talked about this in another vlog and and there has been hints and rumors that the ps5 might even be capable of going further back than that well we'll see what happens We'll see what happens. It'd be very exciting if they suddenly, if you suddenly could throw your PS3 discs and PS2 discs in bloody hellfire. Because I've still, I've still got loads of those. I'm very excited, people. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm totally stoked for it. I think they've gone down the right path from what we've seen already. I always felt like what the the little the little elements you got to play as as Ellie in The Last of Us Part One, or The Last of Us as it's called. I loved those segments and I always felt like I could easily have played more of it. And we, they did give us more, to be fair. They gave us the DLC and we got to play more as her in that, which was fantastic and gave us flashbacks to what actually happened to her and how she got bit and, you know, all these things. So, you know, I, I always had an itch to play more of the game as her because she was a great little character to play as. And now that she's grown up and, you know, she's a woman now, I think she's 19. It's going to be interesting to see how she's developed as a as a woman and attitude wise. And she's very angry in, in the footage that we've seen. Something's happened. For my liking, the, the we've seen the footage of her dancing with the other girl and having a kiss and you know, all that sort of stuff. So for me, it's either about that love or it's about her mum it has to be one of those two things because we know joel's still in it because you know he's, he's he's bouncing about and that's the bit that's concerning me a little bit because it's like well because in some in the first game joel was very much the protector so if he's with her on this journey then 
I, I, I'm not sure how that dynamic kicks in. You know, he can be there from a story perspective, absolutely. So I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about the fact that Joel might not be her companion for the majority of this game. That's my only concern with it. I'm not concerned about her being the main character. I really wanted to play more as her anyway. I like the fact she's gone a bit dark and I'm really keen to see how the story pans out. And I'm really, really excited about the changes they've made in the gameplay because everything they've done with the gameplay has just made you be more stealthy. You can hide in the undergrowth. You can climb under, uh, sorry, crawl under vehicles and I think you can climb up stuff as well like you did before. All sorts of little quirks that you can you can repost, I think, when someone attacks you and uh, all sorts of things you can do. It's fantastic. So I'm hoping, and it looks like they have got every element right. It's just... It's it's a personal thing. It's more like, am I going to love it as much with that dynamic of the two of them not together all the time? I don't know if they're not together all the time, but it feels to me like she's gone off on this rampage and Joel is kind of not there all the time. And, and that's not a bad thing, I'm saying. It's just... For me, it's just like, I don't know how I feel playing a lot of the game without Joel and her together. So it's going to be really interesting to see how they've managed to push that game in a direction where the two of them aren't together and still make people fall in love with it as much as they did with the first one. Because it is just... If you haven't played The Last of Us, people, please go and play it. (laughs) Just please go and find a way to play it, all right? PS3, PS4, just find a... Find a place to play it. Uh, it is just, it's my, it is to this date, my favourite game of all time, simply because of my, I mean, it was just, there were so many elements to it. It was like, it wasn't even like, if you look at the, what that game is, you, you could argue that like, well, what was so special about it? It's just like a, a sneaky stealth action game, but it, it's the direction of the game. It's the directing, it's the music, it's the world and how it's created, it's the levels and how they're done, it's the enemies they've created, it's the, you know, it's the the sickness they've created. The whole thing is just so well done that by the end of it, you just emotionally tapped out because it's just amazing. It's it's really, really good. Story's good, action's good, uh, gameplay's good. You know, the the direction's good, the music's amazing, the the whole thing is just a masterpiece in my opinion. And it's a ten out of ten every time for me, The Last of Us. Every time. Um And that's all I've got to say about that. <laughs> I'm gonna have a sip of my beer. I was gonna say something else and then it went out of my head. Probably because it's my second beer. Ooh, that's nice. The thing is, I'm actually sat in a room. I've got the door. I've actually sussed out now. Sometimes you'll notice that in some of my vlogs, they get really dark. And it's because the sun is beaming outside. And I find it really hard to get light in here. And I thought it was because there was so much light behind me. Because I thought anything light-wise coming towards you would actually light you up. But what I've done, the, the behind this camera is the kitchen door, which leads through the kitchen and into the garden. And that's where all the sun's beaming through. Obviously, that window does too. But I shut that door over just to check it, and everything just went really bright. So it's quite... uh, That's a lesson learned for the future vlogs, people. Anyway, we digress. So there you are with with The Last of Us 2. Part 2. Let's not forget the words, people. The Last of Us Part 2. I really hope they've built it up for a Part 3, because I'd love that to be a trilogy. and, And... for me, there's absolutely no reason why it can't be a trilogy. In fact, you know, it, it would suit me down to the ground that you maybe you do have Ellie on her own or with different companions through this game that aren't Joel, but he still interjects in different points. If there's a Last of Us Part 3 that gives you those two back together again with the ability to decide which character you play as because they're always travelling together or something like that that brings the two of them together. That could well be the plan. And Naughty Dog are just genius at not doing things badly anyway. So I'm very stoked, people. I think 
personal opinion, I think that the what we'll see coming Tuesday will be a date announcement telling us when it's going to happen, but not a date as such, but a either it'll be like a month or it'll be uh, spring, you know, spring 2020 or February 2020. It won't give us an exact day, but it will give us a slot where it might end up. That's my personal feeling on it. I know that um, Neil Druckmann, the director of the game and all master of Naughty Dog, <laughs> uh, he already said that the whole, all of the recording and all of the stuff that was for cutscenes and all that malarkey, all the CGI stuff, all the, that was all done donkeys ago. He posted up on Twitter. So, you know, I think that, ga- I think that game may actually well be done and they've just held off because they, they were looking for the perfect time slot for it. It wouldn't surprise me. So I think it's ready to go, people. I think it's ready to drop, but I'm really excited. Anyway, let's move on, shall we? So my next topic of conversation is Gears of War 5. I realise I'm talking about things that have nothing to do with RPGs, and I'm a very RPG channel, but I'm a gaming channel, people. It just converted itself into an RPG channel for the likes of the Let's Plays, which you guys seem to love. And I will get back to them, I'm sure, at some point. But at the moment, I'm just loving enjoying gaming for a bit and giving you guys a bit of friday vlog time and bringing you whatever news i find of interest so i hope that's all right for you all um but yeah i mean i you know you have to realize that much as though i love a good rpg and it's probably my even though the last of us is my favorite game ever i think my favorite genre is probably rpg so uh, you know the channel just def- by default became more RPG than anything else. I did try, I, I always try and interject with horror games, uh, you know, Resi and all that sort of stuff. And, and there are a group of people that love it, but it's always the RPG stuff that people want to see me do. It's just the way things have happened. It's fine, you know. But when it comes to these sort of things, I'm always going to be talking about any type of game that excites me. Or that I feel like I want to have an opinion about or what have you, you know. Anyway, we are on now to Gears 5. Which in itself, you know, you watch all these professional channels. They have little bottles of water and they're having a little sip of water while they're talking. Oh, bloody hell. What's that all about? (laughs) No, that on this channel, people. (laughs) I'm bloody flagging now. You what's the matter with you? I'm enjoying it too much. I'm having too many sips on my video. Glasses are back on because I have notes. Right. So, before I get going on this, can I just say, I am having... A really fun time on Gears 5 at the minute. But the more I play it, the more little frustrations are setting in. Because I know how good all of the others were. So they have to match that bar. Or they have to make it better. And in some ways they have made it better. And I talked about it last week, I think, and the week before. That... They've made the actions not better so much as, well, not smoother, I I should say, but better so far as you now melee with a knife. So it doesn't matter if you've got the chainsaw on or, you know, you just, your melee is always going to be your knife. You've got the ability to drag things over, you know, you can sneak attack people and all this sort of stuff. All the action stuff they've done is working really well. And and there's a lot of positives to be taken from, from the gameplay itself. The beautiful world, it looks stunning. To this day, Gears 4 and 5 are two of the best looking games I've seen on any of the consoles for, for this gen. Absolutely gorgeous. On the Xbox One X. I can't tell you about the standard Xbox One. But on the Xbox One X, it's just phenomenal. Absolutely amazing. They both are, four and five. So, that all said, even though I'm having a good time, even though I'm having a lot of fun, all of these little things are niggling at me and there's so many just trickling down my brain like, why, why, why? You know what I mean? Like, if I had been part of that development team, I'd be like, wait, because if I was playing this game, why, I wouldn't want to do that. Why would why would you want me to do that? <laughs> you know what I mean? So we, let's run through my list, okay? Which is why my glasses are back on, because I'm now looking at my list. Well, firstly, let me say this. And let me say no more, or a lot more. Why is it called Gears 5 and not Gears of War 5? It was called Gears of War 1, Gears of War 2, Gears of War 3, Gears of War 4, Ge- uh, Gears of War 
well, Gears 5, Gears of War, Judgment, Gears 5. Like, why, why is it Gears 5? Just because the community can't be asked saying the whole title of the game doesn't mean you change the title of the next one. Like, it's like saying, like, oh, we're not going to call it The Last of Us anymore. We'll just call it T-L-O-U. <laughs> it's like, don't change the fucking name just because people are saying Gears 5 instead of Gears of War 5. Just call it Gears of War 5. Like, why have you changed it? It's a little tiny niggle, but, like, why? Leave it alone. <laughs> it's like there's no reason for it. <sighs> you can say, you can see where this is going, people. I'm having a right rant. Uh... Uh, that, yeah, ba basically that on my list says name change for no reason, which is exactly what it is. Absolutely no reason. The irony is, in this game, Phoenix actually says, we're at war yet, but we don't know it. So, Gears of War then, eh? Not Gears 5, Gears of War then, because we're at war, aren't we? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Marcus, my old friend. Uh, yeah, so... My 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 all round gripe is that if you're gonna take a classic set of games like Gears, well, we'll leave Judgment aside because it was a, it was still a good game, but it wasn't really about the main characters. One, the Gears one, two, and three were the the main ones, and you were totally and utterly invested in Marcus and Dom. They were a fantastic duo. There's, I don't want to get, I, I don't want to hit a lot of spoilers, but there's a moment in the third one where it's just heartbreaking. Like you were totally invested in those two characters and you were totally invested in the world. You connected with the world. You felt like you were in another world. Yeah. I mean, it, the whole vibe for, I mean, if anything, the third one kind of took the vibe away a little bit because it made itself a little bit too pretty. The other two were kind of really dark looking games and I think it was a side effect of, if I remember rightly, I think the third game was built on the engine that was used for Bulletstorm, which had come not long before it. I think, I, I seem to remember something about that. And it kind of had all this lush colour in it, whereas the other two were dead, sort of, almost like a grey to them. I mean, they were coloured games, they weren't black and white, but it just had this grey undertone to it. It's hard to explain. But then you ended up in the third game. And it just seemed to have all this lush colour and it felt like a, a slightly different world. But you still felt like you were in the same world to, to a certain extent. And yet, in these games, I don't feel connected to this world at all. I just feel like I'm in, I'm in a watery bit. I'm in a cave bit. I'm in a... You know, I don't feel like I'm anywhere other than there's a... Uh, round there's like in the fourth one and this one you go to the same bloody city which is also something that's winding me up that they keep taking us back to the same areas which we've already been to make new fucking levels people we don't want to go back to the same places we've already been like give us new environments like there's absolutely no excuse with the kind of budget that these people have got to be taking us back to the same bloody places i mean it's like why there's nothing interesting. When we played the first, the biggest gripe of Gears 4 was that you ended up fighting robots for the first three feckin' hours of the game. Might even be more of that. And it's like, why are we fighting robots? Like, where's the horde? Where's the, end of, you know, it was like, it was madness. And so they got that. And, and you don't fight robots. Well, you do, but it's different. They're actually infected by... You know, so that you actually feel like you're still fighting the, the swarm, as they're called now. So that's all been sorted out. But don't take us back to a place um, that we've already been to, that we didn't enjoy in the fourth one, to fight swarm. Like, build us a different area to go to. Like, I don't want to go back to the same place we've already been. <laughs> it's like, the, oh, you've had a long time to make this game. Don't take us back to places we've already been. Anyway, so that wound me up. Uh, I got sidetracked there, people. So the world in itself is kind of, I don't know, it just feels disconnected. It just feels like it's dropping me in different locations and it doesn't feel like it's any kind of, you know, coexisting world of any kind. And that may be something they were trying to get across, that the whole thing's all kind of scattered. There's different people in different settlements and all this sort of stuff. But I just don't feel, even when you, because it takes you to like the main city, this woman's in, gin, gin's in charge. 
and they've got all these glorious buildings and all these things going. So they have rebuilt and they've got all these settlements and stuff. I just don't feel like anything's connected. Um, and even at the beginning of the game, I was like, why is why is this woman so friendly with us when she was trying to kill us last time? <laughs> anyway, um, aside from that, we then... We people had a lot of gripes about the main character JD, who is Marcus Phoenix's son and uh, Anya's son. So Marcus ended up marrying Anya. That was kind of heading that way to, in in Gears Three. Um, she's no, she's no that's not a spoiler, but she is no longer because at the beginning of the game you know that she's not around anymore. So Marcus is still around. He's the result of the two of them. And people just found, I think people just found him a little bit soft and not much grit, you know, like I think he was just a little bit too high school football player type character with blonde fluffy hair, you know, I think it was like people didn't quite get what they were trying to do. And then, so the story sort of panned out. My gripe is this, right? What they've done is you start the game exactly where you finished in Gears 4. And... You're playing away, and then all of a sudden, and I kind of knew it was coming from some of the gameplay footage we'd seen, but you end up playing, the lead character becomes the girl, not him. But the way that they've done it, basically slices him out the whole thing altogether. And it's like, look, if, you, if you're so desperate to have a female lead, or you knew you were going to do it, and you wanted her to follow this path because it does make some kind of sense that she is the lead because she's trying to discover what's going on with her. There's, there's stuff happening to her. There is absolutely no reason that, that JD and the black guy and her can all carry on together. But they've completely sliced him out. There's this, an epic moment where he gets, you know, something happens to him and he gets injured. And, so what's happened to him is... He's ended up where it's spoilers. If you don't want me to, you know, if you don't want to hear any of this, just you can, you can, you know, forward. <laughs> forward or back out. Basically what happens is he, he does a heroic thing. He gets really badly injured and, and what have you. And the next time you see him, and we, didn't, we don't know any of this, so all we know is from, from literally about three sentences that happen a little bit because it basically that happens and then it's like four months later and you end up with her and the black guy together and i mean this is how this is how connected i am at the characters i can't even remember their names like what's her name what's his name i can't even remember <laughs> this is how connected i am after hours and hours of playing i knew from the first ones it was marcus and dom within two minutes anyway so yeah so there's a big cut scene at a point they get to where JD's there, and JD's now got completely shaved head, he's got a badly ripped up arm with all this mech going on on it, with, uh, it's like he keeps having to pump himself, he, he kind of goes into pain, and he has to pump this thing, and it all glows, and, and settles his arm down, so he's obviously been, so they've actually turned him into a really interesting character, and then sliced him out of the game, <laughs> it's like, it's like, what are you doing? You actually turned him into another Marcus, and now you've just cut him out, <sighs> Which, it's just winding me up. I mean, this is me only like a quarter of the way through the game, but it's winding me up. Like, it's like there is absolutely, because he's perfectly fine. He's just off being a soldier with other soldiers. It's like, I'm gonna, why is he not there with these two? Like, he could easily be on this journey with the other two, which leads me on to this. The third character you can play as in this game is the little robot, Jack, that floats about. And it's like, who the feck wants to play as that? I can kind of get it in a, a horde scenario where you can kind of do clever shit, but nobody wants to go through the whole fucking campaign playing as a floaty robot. Who wants to do that? It's like, because basically all you're doing is, Jack, can you put the torch over here, mate? You know what I mean? So if you've got a mate playing as it, all you're going to be doing all the time is saying, for the love of God, can you bring the torch over? I can't see anything. <laughs> Which is another thing that's winding me up. Give us a fucking torch. I don't want to rely on an AI robot to come over and light up a room. <laughs> <laughs> this has got into a right round, people. I was just... <sighs> Deep breath, Stephen. So, I don't know. Maybe it'll make sense later in the game. Maybe JD will come back. I can't imagine that JD's not going to come back into it. But what you've got at the moment is you've got the black guy and her, and you've got Marcus, who's kind of talking to them over the comms all the time, telling them about stuff and everything. 
So basically, we've now got a game where we're not even got a Phoenix in the game. Who's supposed to be the core character, you know, the, the main hero and stuff. It's like... I mean, it, just, it feels like... I said this to me, mate, John, who I'm playing it with. Johnny Boy. Craigie Boy's brother. I said to him, it feels like... It's like Star Wars Syndrome. It's like... It's like when they did Force Awakens and then just gave the second one to somebody else without having three scripts ready. They knew they wanted to make a trilogy, but they didn't write a fucking story for a trilogy. Or if they did, the second director decided he wanted to write his own story, which is what he did, and it was bloody ridiculous. <laughs> it's like, and that's basically how it feels. It's like they've got through the first one and they've decided, now nah, we want a female protagonist now, so we'll stay... Look, just... Why didn't you do that in the first place? I'm more than happy to play it. I mean, why couldn't we add Marcus Phoenix's daughter? I'd have, I'd, I'd have preferred that. I'd have preferred playing as Marcus Phoenix's daughter than having all this chopping and changing of characters. I'd have invested in that. Do you know what I mean? You could even have had the turmoil of the daughter, mother thing, mother not being there anymore. I mean, all that sort of stuff. I don't understand why they felt the need to kick things off with a bloke and then change it into a girl. It's proof of Tomb Raider not enough that a female lead is is perfectly okay. You know what I mean? It's like, no, we need to tempt folk back with a bloke that they're not going to like, and then we'll turn it into a girl in the second one. It's like, just have faith that a female character is going to work. Because it will if you do the right story. <laughs> have I got anything left? I think I have. I think I've got loads. How long have I been going on for? It's 40 minutes, people. This was supposed to be a quick vlog. Right, let's rattle through the other ones, shall we? Let's rattle through. Um, yeah, Jack being the third person playable, silly. Because as I say, JD could easily be running around with him. If you, if you were going to turn her into the main playable, absolutely fine. I have no problem with that. Just keep JD as a third playable. And have all three of them running around. And Jack. Why can't you have all three of them and Jack? I said this to Johnny Boy as well. I said, look, I'm pretty sure Gears 4, uh, sorry, Gears 3 was four player co-op in campaign so there's absolutely no reason you can't have all you know three three humans and jack and just leave jack as an ai anyway they've put in yeah they've put in open areas god only knows why because the glory of these types of games is absolute focus of you know it might be the odd corridor and the thing you can look down and sneak around and find little things and all that malarkey but what they've done now is they've given you a massive uh, we ended up in this snowy area massive circle this vehicle that's basically like a snow it's like a snow bike but it's run by a snow, uh, uh, a sail i don't know how it works but it, it's pretty cool to be fair to it and you can put weapons on it and blah. And then so John got on... Uh, sorry, I got on the back and John got on the, the... There's a turret on it. So I thought, right, do you want to do you want to drive or do you want to sit on the turret? He's like, I don't mind. I thought, I'll drive then. So I drove the first time and it was just down a hill. Took us to a gate. And a side place you could run off to because the gate wouldn't open and then you had to find out to open it. <clears throat> and then when we came back, I didn't think anything of it at this point. So we did all that. We opened the gate and John says oh, i'll drive and fine i'll go on the turret and i thought well, nice i'll be shooting some shit up on this thing <laughs> it's fucking you just sat there this massive gun the turret thing like this right while the other the other person's in their view just driving the thing and steering it all around the place and we end up in this massive snow area and all these places to go and in in theory it's kind of like okay fine but it just doesn't work and the reason it doesn't work is because the turret isn't a gun <laughs> it's like it's a turret that lets you zoom in about a tiny amount into areas of, of land and hit a button that lets you put a marker on it. And it makes no sense because you can't see for shit. The only place that's worth putting a marker down is on the map. So you have to hit back on the, the controller to see the map and see, all right, let's try going over here. And So the turret is of no fun whatsoever. The only person having any sort of joy out of that whole thing is the person driving it. And even then, they're still jumping back and forward to the map to see where they should be going. The whole thing just is like, oh, this is, it's just painful. As the second player, who I am, because John is the host, and that's the way we started it, so we stick with it. It's just not interesting. It's like I'm sat there like a bloody, not, I'm just sat there like a Muppet, basically, with nothing to do. I'm just looking around watching John crash into every small rock that... <laughs> How that guy gets a car from his home to work is 
<laughs> so uh, yeah i i for me i get it i mean what it does bring you is side missions but i i feel like they could have given you those side missions without taking you in an, an open world type environment there's just no need for it i don't think um and it takes the flow right out of it just like honestly i keep saying to john what, what why are we here what are we doing what is the purpose of, uh, of why we're here I mean, the overall purpose is clear. You know, she's trying to figure out what's going on with her. But it's often that we've been wandering around so long that when we do get back to the story mission, it's like, what? why am I here? I don't quite know. And it's all little... It's just all very disconnected is, is the problem. What else have we got? Turret we've talked about. Yeah, now, I've, t I've talked about these visions that she's having, right? So, every now and then, on my screen, as the second player, she's like, oh, 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 and she starts doing all this, right? And I don't think, I, when I first saw it out, and I was like, I don't think anything of it. And then I was trying to do something, and it wouldn't let me. I was like, why can't I do it? I was like, John, there's something wrong, it's bugging out. He's like, no, no, she's having a vision. I said, so what do you mean? He said, yeah, yeah, but like on my screen, she's having this massive vision. I'm seeing all these locusts and all these all this shit happening. I'm like, well, I don't see that. He's like, yeah, but it's because it's happening to her. He's like, yeah, but that's not the point, is it? <laughs> I've no idea what the fuck's going on with her story because I'm playing as the other guy. Like, at, at no point in the conversation in the story is she telling him what's happened or, you know... Like I am completely unawares of all of that shit that's happening to her. I could finish that game if John hadn't said anything. I could finish that game, and I have no idea about all of the visions she's had, about what they meant, about what was in them. I'd have no idea. And it's like you can't do that. Like you have, if you're going to build a game that is for cooperative gameplay and people to enjoy a story experience you can't hide a fraction of the story from the second player they're going to have a fraction of the experience that the other person has had it makes absolutely no sense like you have to find a way of showing that second character what the feck's gone on i mean it, it turned out i actually started playing myself as myself uh, as i started the game again on a solo campaign and i've started playing it myself until, because John can only get on a few times a week, so I'll I'll continue with him when he comes on. But I've started it myself last night on my own, so that I can see this thing happen as the main playable character, so that I know what the fuck's going on in the story. Um, because it's just madness, it really is. And we ended up in there was a couple of rooms we ended up in where only the female character, who's the lead character at this point, could do what was needed to be done, and you had to go onto this big map and it was like a puzzle. But I couldn't take part in the puzzle. I just had to stand in the room five minutes while John was figuring out what he was doing with the puzzle, which was, I'm sure, much fun to him. But I was literally just stood there with nothing to do for five minutes in this game. It's like, at what point, when you were testing this game, did you, as the second player, not mention to the other person that you were bored out your skull? <laughs> It's like, uh, I don't get it. It's like, it's got a flow for all the characters that are playing the game at the time. If you're going to have co-op story campaigns, everybody needs to be able to enjoy it in exactly the same, at exactly the same level. Like, you can't have the main character having the best time, the second character having the second best time, and the third character kind of, you know. You can't build a game like that. Everybody has to have the same positive experience and see everything that happened in the game it, it, it's crazy i have no idea why that made sense to anybody um so that pretty that is pretty much it for the for, for my groans about the game but can i say once again that i'm still having a lot of fun with it i, I am I'm, I'm loving being back in the gears of war universe i'm having a fantastic time in the actual battles the the, the, the mechanics for the battles are fantastic outside of a few really annoying things i couldn't tell you off the top of my head if these annoyances were in the originals but you know it's little things like when you try and roll out the way and the tiniest pipe on the floor stops you rolling so you're just rolling in a in a in the position you're in and die you know like little things like that but gameplay wise all in all has been really really nice really superb gorgeous looking game lots of fun loving being back on co-op 
playing with my mates again, which I haven't done in a long time. So, you know, there's a lot of positives, but, you know, that is quite the list of things that have been niggling the shit out of me all week. And it, and, and to be fair, I can run through all of those and it still makes it an 8 out of 10 for me. You know, it's been getting 9 and 10s, I think. But for me, it makes it an 8 out of 10 because you've not thought things through so far as was it actually needed or did we just do it because we thought we had to? And why didn't we think about everybody's experience other than just the person playing the first person character, the, the first option character? I don't get it. Technically wise, there was uh, we've had we've had a, a bit of lagging, which has been frustrating considering John's got a hundred meg download and I've got seventy meg download. Shouldn't be lags, like so. Clearly, the service is having a bit of an issue, and they keep boasting about having a gazillion servers and having the best experience you can ever have. It's like, well, if that's the case, why are we having on your on your number one product at the minute? Why is there those issues? Like, there shouldn't be those issues if you've got that much power behind it. Um, and the the last thing really is that uh, when when I joined John's games in the old ones, I used to be able to set it that I was wanting to play at hardcore level, right? So when you first go in, it'd say standard or whatever it was called, and then you'd pick you'd move up to hardcore because you want to get the the gamer points for hardcore, or you'd move up to insane if you wanted to, you know. Every single time I join John's game it's preset to intermediate which is middle ground and we want we're we're playing it on the next one up it's not called hardcore it's called experienced and on the old games once you you could select in your default settings you could select that you are an experienced player or hardcore as it was called then you, there is nowhere i can find in this game to do that and what happened was the other night not yesterday, but the night before, went on as normal. There'd been a whole bu bunch of faffing about, and then eventually we got into the game, and I, we were playing for about three hours, and I suddenly realised, because I, you know, it was one of those, I'm oh, bloody awesome tonight. <laughs> but it turned out that I was actually playing on a standard, and John was playing on experienced. So I have now got to go back at some point and do all of that three hours again, because if I want the G's for completing the game on that level, I, I need to go back and, and, and redo them. And it was all because of one moment where John had already started the countdown to start the game and it had passed me by to actually change my difficulty. And you didn't need to remember that in the old ones because once you'd changed it that once in your settings, it always knew that you wanted to play it at that level. So it's just a tiny thing, but it's so frustrating. I've now got to play three hours of the game again if I want to get those gamer points for completing it on, on experienced. But but there you are. Jesus Christ, people, we're heading toward an hour here. <laughs> I'm going to stop moaning now. I'm going to put my tunes on. I'm going to edit all this together. By the time you see this, people, you'll have seen so many hours of gameplay. <laughs> I'll have shrunk myself so much you won't be sick of the sight of me. To be fair, the footage that I've probably shown behind me is footage that I've put in other vlogs, but perhaps not everybody will have seen those vlogs, and perhaps you wouldn't mind seeing it again. But it's a little bit more interesting than just seeing me talking to the camera. It's an old wrinkly bugger, isn't it, really, I think. Flaggins up to you all once again. God, that's empty, isn't it? Oh my God, I was so thirsty then. It has been! Can I just say this? If you have any comments about anything I've said this evening, do please leave a comment down here. It has been an honour and a privilege serving for you once again in this vlog of mine. And I shall see you all next time, folks. Take it easy. Bye. <laughs>